get a chance to review what we uh, learned yesterday. Uh, we have a brother, Steve Erickson. Many of you may have uh, already seen his wonderful gifting at mind mapping discussions, and it is a wonderful way that he will use to illustrate uh, what we've learned. Steve uh, has an extensive background in international business, manufacturing, business development, strategic marketing, and strategic intelligence. I'm not even sure what strategic intelligence is, but boy does it sound good. He he's he's co-founder with Northgate Partners, which uh, is an open door uh, coffee house in Madison, Ohio, but he has served as a vice president of strategic intelligence for Parker Hannifin Corporation. That's a $13 billion globally diversified manufacturer headquartered right here in, in, in Cleveland. But before that, a missionary and a pastor in Japan for 10 years, engineer in Tokyo headquarters for Bridgestone. He's served various other positions, co-authored a, a book on marketing navigation, BS in mechanical engineering, master divinity, strategic marketing from Harvard Business School, certified intelligence professional, and he's fluent in Japanese. So, uh, Steve, would you come up and, in English, give us a good summary <laughs> of what we heard yesterday? Thank you. Well, it's rather intimidating to be here today with so many people with knowledge, experience, not, uh, all the uh, gifts that are necessary to bring this together. But I have a little piece that I end up playing sometimes, so I'm going to do my best to bring that to you. And uh, I'd like to start out just with a, a couple of principles. Chris and I were talking, we both have a similar background coming from engineering, so you have to have the laws of Newton, the law of the principles. Newton's laws work whether you're dropping an apple or launching a satellite, so they always apply, and there are certain principles that always apply to what we're doing. But I, I always like to share this quote, many of you have seen it before, there is an advantage of not planning. This friend of mine, and this professor in England always said this, the advantage of not planning is that failure comes as a complete surprise. <laughs> not preceded by a prolonged period of worry and depression. So, so you don't have to do this stuff. It's a lot of work. Sometimes it's easier just to go the ignorance way. And another one that I think really applies to the church, I've used this one off and on for 20 years, the famous last words of ministry people. We talked about it so much that we thought we had done it. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? So that's really what we're talking about today. So I wanted to, about more than 20 years ago, when I was hired by this big international company, they sent me to three different cities of the world, and they started teaching me principles of transformation. And I was sitting in Prague during the first one of these. I still remember the table. I still remember the speaker. And when he said something that opened up like a door of understanding in me that has changed me ever since. So for these 20 some years, I've pursued this day and night. But it was this whole principle of beginning in the future. Now I call it future memory somehow. And the whole, and the principles of strategic planning, they're very powerful. Last night Dave was sharing that quote that culture eats strategy for breakfast. But I'd like to kind of alter that. Good strategy takes culture into account. And it's probably one of the hardest things to counter. But if you ignore it, it will get you every time. So let me just start back over here. So I tried to take this last night. This mind mapping thing is something I got into a few years ago. Where the whole idea is to take a cloud of ideas, a cloud of principles, a cloud of words, and try to distill that into something very powerful, very strong, very concentrated. And the purpose of doing that is to create insight. When I studied competitive intelligence, the whole idea was knowledge. There's lots of knowledge. There's lots of facts. There's lots of data. In fact, there's too much sometimes. But the key is not to have all that knowledge. The key is to take that knowledge and, and from that distill uh, insight. My sister lived down the road in, in, in the mountains of Colorado from a gold mine. 
and there would be these trucks carrying hundreds of tons of, of gold ore by her house or down the road. But that wasn't really worth anything. But after a lot of work, out of, say, a ton of ore, you might get a fraction of an ounce of gold. That's what we're going for. So what I'm trying to do, and it's rather overwhelming, to try to take a stab at that. So I have all my notes, but if we just start the principle here I want to put out first, it's really these three questions that I always like to start with. The why is extremely important. You have to start with why. And that is a couple of things. First of all, what is the problem you're trying to solve? If you can't define, if you can't describe, if you can't clearly lay out the problem you're trying to solve, you can't solve it. But the other one is, is it important to you? Is it, that, is it so important that you would take your energy, your time, your money to put into it to make it happen? Because if it isn't, then it's not going to go anywhere. So what is the problem? And does it have that kind of energy behind it? So we'll start with that today. The what is the part of it that really got to me these 20 years ago. So whole idea, again, of that's the vision part. It's walking into the future and describing what it is that you're trying to build. And so we're going to take us just barely getting started on that. But if you can't see it in your heart, in your mind, if you can't describe it, if you can't lay it out in a, in a big, in a description that's detailed, you can never build it. So then we start there. And then finally, the how is how we're going to get there. So last night, I started on some of this. So on the why, this... To be honest, I went home with a heavy heart. This is overwhelming. It gets to me right now. This, this why is extremely compelling. We're faced, we talked about last night, they talked about facing many challenges. So many things, social, racial, political offenses, not hearing, lots of God's truth, global pandemic, economic shifts, natural disasters, the church's spiritual thinness and faulty foundations. This is an indictment. This is stunning. The second one I heard last night, and I can't get this one out of my head, the church, the evangelical church is breaking apart. That's stunning. If that's the problem. I mean, you have this, all these challenges, and the church is stumbling. It's breaking apart. It's lost its focus on what was really important. Then we heard last night God is trying to mobilize his church. And Tom pointed out, COVID came along, sort of stopped the world, much darkness, wake-up call. The U.S. has no disciple-making movements. We heard that last night. More than 1,000 in the world, but none in the U.S. Again, what an indictment against the church of it's us. This is our watch that we're on. There's even a lack of understanding of what discipleship is. I went to a, a presentation a few weeks ago, and it was all about discipleship, but really it was about evangelism. They never even talked about discipleship at all. I thought, well, that's new. So that, that's another problem. The Bible study culture has been more important than discipleship. So the knowledge without applying it, and it's the opportunity of our lifetime. So that's the main thing I took away last night. Again, this is a huge problem. It's worthy of focus. It's urgent, it's important, and we need to have that kind of dedication to it to solve it. I, I really believe that if, if we seek after it, like the Lord says, ask, seek, and knock. If we seek after it diligently, he will open up understanding on how to get there. So that's the why. Now the what, I just barely got started on. So the what is like, if we were to walk into the future and say we've solved this problem, we're looking at it, what does it look like? And I've got, I have today to try to flesh this out more. We talked about effective strategies. I talked about before taking culture into account. I, I work a lot with, with visionaries. The last six years I've been working day, weekly, if not daily, with, with believing Jews in Israel. And I'm uh, getting really seeing a lot of that. Some of these are prophetic visionary types. And it's quite amazing. They see these visions. They have these big words. They see things in the future. That's important. But vision without strategy and a plan goes nowhere. Uh, discipleship skills, we're trying to get that into the, we need these skills, but Dave is going to teach us some things. Process, 
My, I grew up in Japanese manufacturing business in Japan. And one thing that was put into my mind, my soul, is you can't do anything without process. You can't make two things the same in a row without process. You can't improve anything without process. You can't teach other people how to do anything without process. Process is the key. So just, we Americans like to wing it sometimes. The Japanese were so detail-oriented and so methodical, it just puts us to shame. So I think that we need to have a process that can be, it can be replicated, it can be taught, it can be measured. Uh, last night, fasting and prayer came up, very important to this whole thing. And then this one was encouraged to me, this thing, the last one about leaders who disciple, discipled in godly seasoned leaders. This is the part like in their 40s to 70s, I made the cut. <laughs> High end, but I made the cut. Who can disciple the next generation? So then today we're going to hear more about this. And I'll, I'll keep working this out. I'll share more later in the day. But again, I, I think the, the why is clear. The what is beginning to emerge. And then we have to take that into the how. Actually do something and not just talk about it, which is always the challenge. So thank you. <laughs>